you end up redoing the bridge for the bridge 2001. And uh, I, I thought that was a dope ass concept. I mean, because it had you, Mob Deep, uh, Capone, Nas. Like, like, how did that whole thing come together? They had to bring me in on that project. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what they did was they sent Body G to my house. <laughs> Rob Labor. I was living out in Long Island. They said, yo, go get Shin. So Rob had to actually come and lift me up and carry me to the car and bring me to do that record. <laughs> because that I wanted to do, I didn't want to remake those lyrics from the original bridge. I wanted to flow like I flow. And they wanted me to do like a rehash of what I did already. So I'm like, I'm not doing that song. So they sent Body G to my house. Body G had to pick me up and put me in the van and kidnap me to the studio. For real, for real. You know what I'm saying? And Cole Mega, he was really the one that sat there and convinced me to do that verse the way that I did that verse on that song. It was Cole Mega. Like, yo, Shan, come on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I really wasn't going to do it. When you think of Queens, you, you, you have to include Nas. Now... When did you first learn about Nas, and, and how, how did you guys interact over the years? Well, Nas was a little kid at that point when I was doing it. And uh, uh, it was like, he was just a young kid from Vernon. I didn't, you know, you never know who you're influencing when you're doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? But I guess he kept an eye on me and like, yo, that's what I want to do. And he did it well. Still doing it well. You know what I'm saying? But... I used to try and tell him back in the days, and I'm using his line from him. He didn't listen. He'd be riffing while I'm telling him stuff. Like, yo, Nas, you don't need to be bringing all these cats with you when you go to these shows. Because when it jumps off, they don't know the rest of the crew. They just going to blame it on Nas. Oh, Nas came through and his crew did this. His crew did that. You know what I'm saying? He learned along the way. He knew how to separate himself from the crap, from what, you know what I'm saying? But I used to try and tell him how the game was when he was young. I, I remember one time, only one time, me having that conversation with him. And he was a younger cat, you know what I'm saying? But as far as me influencing him, it wasn't like I, was, I knew him from the block because, like I said, he was a young kid. And when I used to come home from tour, I used to go up to the candy store and tell all the kids, go ahead and get what you want, get what you want. Because I was coming home with bags of money from these shows. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, get what y'all want. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of kids I influenced, but not all of them went into the rap game that, in that direction. I mean, for example... Uh, Nas's Illmatic is one of my all-time favorite albums. Not even hip-hop albums, just albums of all time. Did you know Nas before he dropped Illmatic? I didn't know Nas until after, after he started making records. And even okay. then, I really didn't know Nas. Because he hung out on the other side of the block. I was from 10th Street, he was from Vernon. You know what I'm saying? And it's like six blocks. It's six blocks but Vernon 40 side didn't mess with 41st side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 40 side of 10th Street really didn't mess. You know what I'm saying? It was like six blocks of different cliques. Although we would float through the blocks, it was just like we didn't, we didn't splurt. You stayed on Vernon. I stayed on 10th Street. You know what I'm saying? That's just the way it was. I mean, but you couldn't first... come into projects and start nothing being from outside of the projects. I mean, when you first heard the Nas records, did you, did you see the potential? I loved it. He, did, he started out working with Large Professor on the barbecue. That's mm -hmm. where I really, you know, and I knew Large Professor from messing with G-Rap. You know what I'm saying? And Neek. So I knew Large Professor through that. So he was on the barbecue and that like really sparked his career right there. You know what I mean? That really sparked his career. Right, and you know, Nas also said that G-Rap was one of his biggest influences. G-Rap was, G-Rap was the man. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. What was it like to actually do a record with Nas, you know, after that, you know, that many years? 
That was all cool. You know what I'm saying? It was all good. I, like I said, I didn't want to do it, but it wasn't no hatred towards them. It's just that y'all got y'all idea of what I should be doing, and I know what I want to do. I understand. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I understand what y'all want me to do, but don't shunt me. I'm not trying to shunt you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, it is what it is.